All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about um, some more graph transformation stuff. I'm going to talk about vertical um, and horizontal stretching and reflecting. So a couple things here. Um, I've kind of written them all down generically. It's definitely going to take me more than one video to get through all this stuff. So um, the first one is if you multiply the function basically by a number out front, it has the effect of stretching it vertically up and down. Okay, if the number is bigger than 1, it's going to stretch it. If the number um, you're multiplying it by is a fraction between 0 and 1, it's going to squish it together. Okay, so those are the first two conditions. Um, the next co two conditions, maybe we can even label them. So conditions 3 and conditions 4, it basically say if you multiply the x by a number, if you multiply it by a number bigger than 1, what it basically does is it compresses it horizontally, okay, so kind of in and out to the left and right. Um, the next condition says, basically, if you multiply it by a number, a fraction between 0 and 1, it has the effect of stretching it, okay, so it stretches it out. And the last two conditions are just conditions that says if you multiply out front by a negative number, it flips the graph about the x-axis, and if you uh, plug a negative inside, you flip it about the y-axis, okay? So I'm going to do uh, one real generically here. I've got a real generic one here that I'm going to do. And um, so this blue function is my function f of x, and these are all supposed to be straight lines. Okay. Eventually, I'm going to do some other videos where I put all of this stuff together and some more complicated ones, but for now, just kind of the bare bones. Okay, so it's kind of this little sawtooth function on the left-hand side. Um, it's got an x-intercept at negative 4. When it's at negative 3, it's down here at negative 2. When it's at negative 2, it goes through 0. When it's at negative 1, it's up here at positive 2. When it's at 0, it's at 0. Um, it should be an open circle here. Um, at negative 1, and then it's just supposed to be a flat line extending over to 2, and then it jumps down, it starts at 2, negative 2, and again is a flat line from 4 to 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph all six of these functions that I have down here on the bottom left. So 2 times the function, a half, the 2 inside, the half inside, and a negative out front, and then f of negative x. So let me see if I can't um, do them all here. Um, all right, so let's do the first one first. Okay, so I'm going to try to graph what two times this function would look like based on the original function. Again, there's no way I'm going to be able to get through all of these in one video. But basically what happens is, if you take two times the, the function, what you're really doing is you're multiplying, think about f of x as being y, you're multiplying all the original y coordinates, you're multiplying all the original y coordinates by 2. So instead of, you know, at negative 1, instead of being at the y value of 2, you're now multiplying it by 2 so that you'll be up here at a height of 4. Okay, if you think about the x-coordinate of negative 2, its original y-coordinate is 0. If you multiply that by 2, well, you're still at 0. Um, at negative 3, originally your y-coordinate was negative 2, but now if you multiply it again by 2, you're going to be down here at a y-coordinate of negative 4. Let me see if I can squeeze it in here. Um, so here's negative 3. Again, a real rough graph. Sorry, I'm not an artist. And then at negative 4, my original y-coordinate is 0. If I multiply it by 2, well, I am still at 0. Okay? And then it's still going to have that sawtooth shape um, associated with it. Okay, again, it doesn't really look like it, but it's supposed to be stretched out. Look where the y-coordinate is now. This is negative 1, 4. And down here at the bottom left, this is negative 3, comma, negative 4. It's still a y-intercept of negative 4. On the right-hand side, it's going to have the same effect. It's going to multiply the original y-coordinates all by this value of 2. 
So instead of being at negative 1, it'll now be at negative 2. It'll still extend over the same distance. And then it'll jump, and again, instead of being at negative 2, it'll now be down here at negative 4. And will it extend over a distance of 4 units as well? Okay, so that's the basic idea here. When you multiply the function by a 2, it just stretches everything out by a factor of 2. Okay, sorry, let me try to bring it back into focus here for a second. Okay, so hopefully that's a little better. Alright, um, let me see if I can at least do one more in this video. Instead of multiplying it by 2, suppose we multiply it all by 1 half out front. Okay, it's going to have the exact same well, I guess obviously not the exact same effect, but the idea is the same. It's still going to go out the same distance. It's still going to go out to negative 4. Okay, and it's still going to extend out to positive 4 on the right-hand side. But the difference now being is I'm now multiplying the y-coordinates by 1 half. So all the original y-coordinates are now going to get multiplied by a half. So instead of being at negative 1, 2, I'm only going to go up a distance of 1 now, so I'll be at negative 1, 1. The original y-coordinate associated with negative 2 was 0, so I'll still be there. The original y-coordinate associated with negative 3 was negative 2. Again, if I multiply that by a half, I'm at negative 1. The original y-coordinate associated with negative 4 is 0. If you multiply that by a half, again, you're at 0. So I think this one does look a little bit better maybe than my last one. Um, it does look, I think, a little more squished. So I multiply the, the function by a number smaller, um, basically a fraction between, between 0 and 1, and it's going to squish the graph, it's going to compress it um, vertically. On the right-hand side, the same thing's going to happen. Instead of going down to a height of negative 1, now we'll simply be down at a height of negative 1 half. Open circle. It'll still be a flat line over to 2. Okay, it's getting a little covered up. And then at 2, instead of being at the y-coordinate of negative 2, we'll now jump down here to negative 1. So this is 2 comma negative 1. And then that line will extend all the way over to 4. Okay, and that would be the graph of one-half times the function. All right, so um, I'll try to do the other two in uh, one other video, so uh, dig around for that. I'll do um, f of where the two's inside, where the one-half is inside, and then we'll do a uh, reflecting um, about the x and y axis as well.